Here's the Phoenix Suns' journey into the NBA Finals, from DeAndre Ayton and Devin Booker's development to the impact of CP3 and Crowder, the Suns have gone from irrelevancy to potential championship glory in less than a year. But this video fully breaks down how Phoenix has developed into top contenders and if they'll win the franchise's first title of all time. Before I continue, around 80% of the people who watch this channel are not subscribed, so if you fall into that category, please subscribe. I'm trying to reach 100k by the end of the year. Also, leave a like on this video, it takes a few seconds and makes a huge difference. So, injuries made their path through the Western Conference convenient, but this journey goes back much further than just these playoffs. We'll get into their playoff run in the current core, but let's look at a brief history of the Suns' road back to legitimacy. The Suns were bottom feeders in the West for exactly a decade. The post-Steve Nash era was headlined by an undersized backcourt of Goran Dragic and Isaiah Thomas, who made Phoenix just competitive enough to not make the playoffs, while at the same time not getting a high draft pick. There's nothing worse than being stuck in the middle in the NBA. In the mid-2010s, the Suns were just flooded with high-volume guards as Brandon Knight and Eric Bledsoe were also on the roster in 2014-15, so it was a complete logjam in the backcourt. They traded both IT and Dragic away at the deadline, and it was officially rebuild time. The summer of 2015 saw them steal the future face of their franchise down at pick number 13 and spark that rebuild. That pick turned out to be some guy named Devin Booker. Booker was backing up Eric Bledsoe and Brandon Knight, but to start his career, Booker also had veterans like P.J. Tucker, Tyson Chandler, and Leandro Barbosa to learn from, which were big pieces to help Devin's development. So that was smart from the Suns' front office, but what wasn't smart was drafting Dragon Bender with the fourth overall pick in 2016. They struck out again in 2017 with the number four pick, this time taking Josh Jackson. Those two players in Bender and Jackson turned out to be complete busts, but thankfully for Suns fans, they got two players the next year in the 2018 draft who'd make up for that. The number one pick, DeAndre Ayton, and the number 10 pick, Mikael Bridges, have been crucial pieces. Still, the Suns finished 19 and 63. That summer in 2019, they traded their 6th overall pick to receive Dario Saric and the 11th overall pick. At 11, they took Cameron Johnson. Both Johnson and Saric have been rotation players in the Suns' current playoff run, so the 2019 draft turned out to be the third productive draft night for the Suns' front office in the last five years. 2019-20 really wasn't going too well. The Suns were well back of a playoff spot, but in the bubble, they went 8-0, with Devin Booker averaging 30, but that wasn't enough to sneak into the playoffs, and 2020 didn't prove to be the Suns' year. But the 2020 championship-winning Lakers and the 2021 Phoenix Suns have some major similarities. Firstly, they both didn't make the playoffs in seven-plus years prior to making the finals. LA hadn't made the postseason since 2013, and Phoenix hadn't made it since 2010. Secondly, and more notably, to acquire the piece that put them over the top, both the Lakers and the Suns had to give up at least three players to receive that guy. LA gave up Josh Hart, Lonzo Ball, and Brandon Ingram to acquire Anthony Davis, while Phoenix gave up four players, two being starters, Ricky Rubio and Kelly Oubre Jr. to acquire Chris Paul. Considering Phoenix only had to give up a single future first round pick to acquire CP3, and he's fueled them to a finals appearance, that trade was a big time steal for Phoenix. The fans and media weren't the only ones who were wrong about Chris Paul's days as a star player being numbered. Organizations were proved to be wrong as well. His 2017 exit from the LA Clippers led to the franchise's first lottery appearance in seven seasons. The Houston Rockets 2019 trade of Paul for Westbrook that set into motion a two-year collapse that will require years of rebuilding. Oklahoma City's decision to trade Paul in November has achieved its intended effect for both sides. Paul's made the Suns West champs, while the Thunder ended up in the lottery. CP3 is making his first finals appearance of his career after eliminating the team he spent over half a decade with in the LA Clippers. It was so fitting how he closed out the Clippers at Staples Center, 
just an iconic 41 point performance. After the basketball gods held a curse over Chris for a decade and a half, this year he's getting every bit of luck possible. More on that later on. Meanwhile, Jay Crowder's making his second straight finals appearance and is proving to be one of the most underrated free agent signings of the 2020 offseason. Phoenix signed Crowder for three years and $30 million, a contract that's making him look like a genie in the bottle for predicting that the Suns would be competitive. This past June 13th, Crowder opens up about his decision to leave the Miami Heat and join the Suns, saying, quote, I know I look like a genius with my decision. When I made the decision, you should have seen how many text messages I got like, what am I doing? Why are you going to Phoenix? They haven't made the playoffs in 10 years. More on Crowder later on. At 12 and four, the Suns have the best record so far in the 2021 playoffs. Two of the three games they lost came with Paul trying to play with one arm after injuring a shoulder, and one other game they lost came with CP3 out due to COVID. However, they had the advantage of playing the Lakers without Anthony Davis for the most part, the Nuggets without their second option, Jamal Murray, and the Clippers without Kawhi Leonard. But this shouldn't take away from what the Suns have done, and I'm about to show you why they're going to be a nightmare to beat four out of seven times in the finals. While Chris Paul's leadership, assist making, and timely jumpers make him Phoenix's most valuable player, Devin Booker's the team's best scorer. Booker says he often sits and just listens to Paul talk, soaking up every word of what that day's lesson is. Booker said recently, quote, you can ask anybody on this team, how has Chris developed your game? And everybody's going to have a lengthy answer because he cares. He cares about each and every individual, and he'll let you know when he sees something that can better you. Meanwhile, here's what DeAndre Ayton had to say about Chris Paul. Oh, I love CP, man. Um, <laughs> I, like I said, that's the that's really the only teammate that really pushed me, like big bro type push, knowing what I got and that I never thought that I had. I think it was, it was the best thing that happened to my career. You know, like D-Books finally reached the big stage after not making the playoffs for the first five years of his career, and he's thriving. Devin stayed loyal to the organization that drafted him, and they rewarded him by building the team around him. Drafting 3 and D talents like Mikhail Bridges and Cameron Johnson, they could have took Luka Doncic, but instead decided to take Mikhail Bridges because he better complimented Booker. Then there's the dominant big man in the middle, DeAndre Ayton, and the free agency acquisitions of CP3 and Jay Crowder have perfectly complimented the now 24-year-old. The Suns, from top to bottom, were straight trash through the first four years of Booker's career. If you were watching, he was getting better all the time. If you didn't think he was always a guy who could be a big time scorer on a big time team, you didn't know what you were watching. But the playmaking, feel for the pick and roll, the commitment to defending, and his developed leadership, all this evidence that Booker has long been more than just a guy putting up empty stats, had been readily available for some time. Conversely, if you were a believer in D-Book, he's lived up to the hype. After scoring 47 in his son's first round closeout game versus the Lakers, Booker put up 34 on the Nuggets in his second closeout game. He may have struggled with his efficiency in the series against LA, but for the playoffs overall, Booker's averaging 27 points, 7 rebounds, and 5 dimes per game on above average shooting splits. He also dropped a 40 point triple double in Game 1 of the West Finals, joining Jerry West, Charles Barkley, Westbrook, Doncic, Butler, Durant, and Oscar Robertson as the only players to ever do that. But without their offensive rebounding phenom DeAndre Ayton, the chiseled 22-year-old who owns the paint, the Suns wouldn't be in the Finals. Ayton's shooting a league third best 71% in his first postseason run, and averaged 18 and 14 in the conference finals, which was highlighted by game four, where he grabbed 22 rebounds. Booker and Ayton aren't the only ones who've taken their games to the next level this year. Small ball forward Mikhail Bridges took a big leap in his third season. This season, only 13 players around the league made more field goals at a better percentage than Mikhail did. Only eight players made more three pointers at a better percentage. No other player shot a better clip from the field and from deep. 
Bridges shot 76% at the rim, 51% from mid-range, 42.5% from three, 65% on twos, and his true shooting percentage was at 67%. That true shooting topped Amari Stoudemire for the highest percentage in franchise history back in 08. In his last 11 games, not counting the very brief appearance in the final regular season game against the Spurs, Mikhail shot 62% from the field, 55% from three, he made 2.6 trays, and averaged 17 points along with 1.8 steals and 1.1 blocks. And for his development, Jay Crowder deserves a ton of credit. Way back on November 30th, GM James Jones said Crowder will show me Kale Bridges and Cam Johnson what it takes to play high-level basketball like the playoffs. Jones also said Jay's a guy who brings an intensity that'll set an example. Now we know why James Jones won Executive of the Year because he was spot on with that analysis of Crowder. Jay's been a lockdown defender and the perfect mentor with his vocal leadership to Bridges and Johnson. So will the Suns finish the job? Well, since the Phoenix Suns' inception back in 1968, the closest they've ever gotten to a title came in 1993. That's when Charles Barkley came up two wins short of beating Michael Jordan in the NBA Finals. 28 years later, and the Chris Paul, Devin Booker-led Suns have the franchise's best chance to capture its first ever title. At 36 years old, Chris Paul's longevity is extremely inspirational and impressive. Everyone loves to talk about LeBron's defiance of father time, and rightfully so, but Paul should be mentioned in the same breath when it comes to that. Over a decade and a half gone by, Paul still appears to be at his near peak and he's an enormous part of the reason why the Suns are now just four wins away from their first world title in franchise history. With how he and Devin Booker can pick apart defenses in the pick and roll, combined with the beastly rebounding, inside scoring, and rim protection of DeAndre Ayton, anything can happen. Then, taking into account the elite three and D men on the wing, like Jay Crowder, Mikhail Bridges, and Cam Johnson, this team's damn well-rounded especially considering I've gone this entire video without mentioning another one of their high-volume shot creators in campaign. He can get it done off the dribble, too. Payne can slice through any defensive set he encounters by manufacturing buckets from nothing off the dribble. I remember when my Raptors just waved Payne early in the 2019-20 season. He barely played for the Suns last season, but 2021's been a coming-out party as he's averaged 11 points. Everyone's hoping Giannis comes back for the Bucks, but him being out kind of opens up the door for CP3. Although I still believe there's a universe where the video I made about the Milwaukee Bucks winning the title is true. As I mentioned in that video, the Suns are the most dangerous matchup for the Bucks. Crowder locked up Giannis last year, and the 7-1 reach of Mikhail Bridges could also be an issue for the Greek Freak. Don't forget, the Suns also have Torrey Craig on the wing, another solid defender. I'm not saying Giannis will get shut down because of those guys, but it'll be his toughest challenge yet by far. Offensively, the shot creation of Devin Booker displays flashes of Kobe Bryant, and his pure bucket-getting ability is a gift from God for Suns fans. D-Book's stone-cold ability to lock in and knock down daggers could be the driving factor for the Suns' first championship. It would be amazing to see CP3 get his first ring, Leave a thumbs up if I should make a prediction video for the NBA Finals, and will the Suns win the title in your opinion? Let me know in the comments section. This was Deep Flow. Have a great one, and I'll see you next video.